Praise the Lord, everyone. It's so good to be in the house of God this evening on this great Sunday. Um, it's in the house of God where we can get everything that we need. So um, it's so good to be here. It's an honor. It's a, a privilege to be able to speak to you guys. I want to give honor to my dad, my pastor, Pastor Silas, for giving me this opportunity to speak to you all. Give honor to my parents and my siblings and my family. I love them so much. Uh, but I feel like God has given me a word to tell you today. So with all that being said, I do want to go to the book of Matthew 25. Matthew 25, we're going to start from uh, verse number 1, and we're going to go down to verse number 4. Matthew 25, 1 and 4, and I greet all of you in Jesus' name. Uh, the Bible Amen. says in Matthew 25, verse 1, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took the lamps, and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in the vessels with the lamps. From this short moment, I want to talk to you guys. Protect your anointing. And we're going to pray that Jesus will help us. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this great day that you have given us. God, I pray that you would anoint me to speak this word as you want me to speak it. God, I pray for those that are watching online, God, that they can receive something from you. God, I pray for those that are here today, God, that they will live here with something greater than they came here with. God, I pray that you will help us all of us here today to know what your word says and what you want us to respond and how you want us to respond. God, I pray that your, you, your name will be lifted high and that you will get all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. And we love you and we thank you for what you're about to do in this place in jesus name and everyone say amen amen, amen. amen. so i want to talk on protecting your anointing because whether you, whether you realize it or not all of us have something that god has given us and if we don't learn how to use the will we might lose what God has given us. The Bible let us know in this great story that I started reading from, verse, uh, from the book of Matthew 25. The Bible says that the kingdom of heaven is like this. And he goes on and explains and tells us that it, there was 10 virgins, there was 10 women. And one thing that all those women had in common, there was virgins. There was 10 virgins. But the Bible gives us two categories of the 10 virgins. It tells us, uh, it gives us a separation or it describes the 10 virgins. The Bible says that there were five that was wise, that was smart, and there was five that was foolish. And the Bible says that, and, and, and the five of them that were wise, and the five were foolish. But the Bible says that those that were foolish took the lamps and took no oil with them. The Bible let us know that out of the 10 virgins, five of them were foolish because they had a lamp. But there was no oil in there to keep the lamp alive and to keep the lamp going. They had a lamp, but there was no oil in the lamp. And the Bible says, but there were some other uh, uh, the wise women that they had lamp, but they also had oil in the lamp. Because can I tell you here today that, that it is dangerous walking around with a lamp, but you have no oil in there. Because what the reality is... When the lamp runs out with no oil, there's nothing that you can do about it. You got to get more oil. You got to put oil in the lamp. And the Bible says those that they were foolish, that when the bridegroom came and, and, and they was ready to meet him, those that were smart and wise, they came, but they had oil in the lamp. But they, those that were foolish, they came ready to meet the groom. They, they thought they were prepared. They thought they had everything. But they were missing oil in the lamp. So, so what, what I want you to know is that you can feel like you're ready, but if you're missing the oil, you might not be 100% ready. So we find five foolish with no oil in the lamp, but can I remind us that it's, walk, it's like walking around with a Bible, but you have no oil in you. It's like walking around with a Bible, but you don't tell people about Jesus. It's like walking around knowing who God is, but you don't tell people who, who he is. And that's walking around with no oil. It's like dressing up in a suit and tie every day, but you don't tell people who Jesus is. It's like coming to church, and, but you don't really reach out to people. That's walking around with no oil. But when you walk around with oil, you can let people know that Jesus got a hold of you and that God has changed your life and God made you who he wants you to be. That's walking around with oil. But those that were foolish, they walked around with a lamp, 
But there was no oil in the lamp. It's like walking around with a Bible, but you never open it and read. It's like walking around with knowing God, but you don't reach out to him. It's like walking around with knowing that God is alive, but you never pray and you never take the face of God and you never read the Bible. That's walking around with no oil. And, and when the bridegroom came, those that were ready had oil in the lamp. So when they see the bridegroom come, they was ready to meet him. But those that we, we, that was with no oil, they looked upon those that with oil and they said, can we get a little bit of your oil because we don't have no oil. But it was too late. The bridegroom was there. They didn't have time to go back and get oil. They didn't have to go, they didn't have time to go back and tell somebody about Jesus, how he changed their life. They didn't have time. The bridegroom had come. And when he came, he expected the ten virgins to be ready. But five of them were foolish and they came with no oil and he was there, he was right there, he was in the presence of them and they could see him and they could touch him and they could feel him. They didn't have time to go back and get oil in the lamp because he was already there. Can I tell you that when God comes back, there will be no more opportunities for you to reach somebody else. There will be no more opportunities for you to tell your families about God. There's not going to be no more opportunities. And as I know my whole life, I went to school and I graduated. And, and my senior year, my senior year when I was in school, I, I started this Bible club. And it, it was called Project 7. And every Friday, we would, I, I would bring food, I would bring snacks, I would bring games. And I would reach out to the kids and I would tell them about Jesus. But if I would have never done that, I can't go back to school. I can't go back being a senior. There's things that I can't go back and do. That's why every day that you get, it's an opportunity for you to reach somebody. It's an opportunity for you to have oil in your land. So I remember every Friday, uh, I, would, I, would, I, would, I didn't have a job. I didn't work. I was going to school as a full-time student. And I remember every Friday night, I, I would ask my mom and my parents, I said, hey, can I get some money? Because I want to bring food, I want to bring snacks. I didn't have a job. But the greatest thing about this, as I look old, as, as I'm older now, when I look back, is I didn't feel bad asking my parents for money. This is a thought that came to me the other day, is every time I needed some money to buy snacks and buy drinks, as I look now, I never felt bad. I never regretted getting money for my dad and for my mom to help me buy snacks because I realized what I was doing was so important and what I was doing was so great that I don't regret asking for money so for me to bring food so those students can hear the word of God. Sometimes why, the reason why you feel bad for asking for doing something is because you're doing it for the wrong reasons. And, and right now, as I look back, I don't regret asking my parents for money. I, was, I didn't have a job. I was a full-time student. And I was saying, Mom, can I get some money so I can go buy drinks and food? And every Friday after school, I would have about, the first time I had, I had the club, I had about like 25 students come. And the next one, I had like 30, I had 40. I had all the students come to my, my, my club and I would teach the word of God. I would teach them about the love of Jesus. And I, I would let them know that there's something more than just going to school. There was something greater than just waking up every day and going by your life. I was still letting them know that God is alive and God loves them. And I remember having Bible studies in the middle classroom. I had students all across the school asking me in, about Jesus and how you know him and everything. And as I look back, it was something that I don't regret doing. It was something that if I had the opportunity, I would go back to school and I would start another Bible club. It's something so, because I was walking around with oil in my lamps. But if I would have walked around with no oil, then I would have missed a great opportunity for, for me to reach those kids. And I remember three boys came, came to church and they was baptized and, and they got a hold of God. It's because I was walking around with oil in my lamp. See, when you walk Walk around with oil on your lap. You can teach somebody about Jesus. You can reach somebody else. You can let them know that God is for them. And if God be for me, then who can be against me? When you walk around with oil, you can do some great things in your life. So these five foolish came with no oil. It's like walking around with a lamp, but with no oil. But when you start having oil over your life, you can do what God has called you to do. See, Psalm 199 and 11, the Bible, David said that word have I hid in my heart 
that I might not sin against thee. See, David understood that if I'm going to walk around with God, I'm going to have this word of God in me. And he said, the word of God have I hidden in my heart so I can't sin against thee. Because David understood that if I have the oil, if I have the word of God in my life, I would not sin against God. But it's the oil that will remind me, don't do that, that's bad. Don't go there, that's terrible. Because when you have the oil, when you have God, when you have Jesus, you can walk around with the oil in your life. Acts 1 and 8, the Bible says, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. The Bible says that when the Holy Spirit comes, you're going to receive power, and, and you shall be a witness. See, when you have oil in your life, you we have power to witness to other people. The reason why most people don't reach out to witness is because they are missing the oil in the life but when you have the oil when you have the anointing over your life you will be able to reach people from this area and from that area from this area from this area because when you walk around with the oil you can reach people you can tell them that Jesus is for you and that Jesus loves you and Jesus wants you to be delivered and Jesus wants you to be healed and he wants to restore your mind because when you walk around with the oil you've got to be able to know what's in the oil you can't walk around with a lamp, but with no oil. But when you begin to open the book of life, when you begin to read the bread of God, and you begin to read the Bible, you begin to understand that that's the oil, that's the anointing that can help you with somebody else. Mm -hmm. The problem with many Christians, we walk around with Bibles in our hands, but we don't open our mouth and let somebody know about Jesus. And, and I understood at a young age that when you reach those that are around you, that's what God is calling you for. If you're in America or in a certain city, God wants you to reach those people that you see every day. And as a senior in my high school, I realized that, that even if I'm in school, God, there's something that God wants me to do. And at that moment, I realized that, that the reaching people from all across the world is great. That's awesome. But the people that's around you, the people that you see every day, those are the people that God wants you to reach first. Because you see them every day. You work with them. You go to school with them and you know them. So God wants you to know them, to, to reach out for them. David was anointed, 4 Samuel 16, the Bible says that he sent a body man. Now he was ruled, this is, uh, this is 1 Samuel 16, verse 12. And he sent a body man. Now he was ruled and with, and with of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David. And from that day forward, so Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. See, what, what you have to understand that when Samuel came to anoint David, he was in the middle of his brothers. He was in the middle of all his brothers. The brothers, they were good looking. They were, they were, they were, they were beautiful for, to be crowned and, and, to be, and to be anointed. And they felt like they were the one. But when Samuel came, the Bible says that God told Samuel, that that's him, that's David, that's who I want you to anoint. And Samuel, at first, he was surprised because David had brothers that went to wars, that went to wars, and they fought great battles, and they was great men, and, and they did all these great things. But when Sam, when God told Samuel, he said, "I don't want you to anoint them. I want you to anoint that young boy right there, David. I want you to anoint David because that's the man I have chosen, and that's the man I want to be anointed." So Samuel gets the oil. And, and he anoints David in the middle of his brothers, in the middle of the ones the father was going to get anointed. Samuel gets the oil and he anoints David. And from that moment, the Bible says that, that David was anointed and he went and he became what God called him to do. But I want you to, I want you to look at the story in a different way. I want you to know that David was already anointed before Samuel poured the oil on top of him. Now hear me. God had already anointed David. But when Samuel came to pour the oil, what I want you to understand, that was a public announcement that David is being anointed. People, God was saying, okay, here, I want you to know David is being anointed publicly, and I want you to see that. But what I want you to know is David was already anointed before Samuel got to the house. David was anointed when, when he was in the field, worshiping all by himself. David was anointed when he was killing lions and bears, when nobody was around. That's when David was getting his anointing. David was anointed when he was by himself. 
So when Samuel came and put the oil, that was a public announcement that David is being anointed. But what they didn't realize that David was already anointed before Samuel came to the house. Because David got a hold of God when nobody was around. So when they put the oil, now they know he got a hold of God. But before Samuel ever took the lamp and the oil, David was already anointed. Amen. What I want you to know is, it, 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 so, it, it feels amazing when everybody can see you being anointed, but they don't know the battles that you fought all by yourself. It's great when you get up and you preach a great sermon, but they don't know the battle that you was fighting before you got up and preached. So it, it, it feels amazing when the, when the building is full and you're being anointed, but David was already anointed before Samuel got there. He was anointed when he was by himself dancing and worshiping God when his brothers already left. He was anointed when he was playing instrument to, to his dad, to, to uh, to the king, he was already anointed. Amen, amen. So when Samuel came, that was just a public announcement that David had been anointed. But David was anointed before Samuel got there. Mm -hmm. Because God already chose David before Samuel got there. So that's why God told Samuel, don't anoint his brothers. I want you to anoint David because that's the one I have anointed. Mm -hmm. See, in this generation, we need people that will get anointed when nobody else is around. Amen. We need people that will pray when nobody's watching you. Amen. We need people that will open the book of life and the word of God and read when nobody's watching you. Amen. Because we, we, can get, we can get in a place where we want people to watch us. This is not about you or me, but it's about the glory of Amen. God and what God can get out of it. So you wanna be, if you want to be anointed and you want to get the oil in your life, you have to get God all by yourself. So if you want to get anointed and you want to be used by God, it's going to take those times that you by yourself and you feel like you can't go no more, but you take another step. That's when God would anoint you. And I'm getting ready to close. But, my, but the whole sermon, the whole message of this is when you get anointed, is when you by yourself. Because the five foolish we started reading, the ten, the, the ten virgins, the five that got oil on the lamp, they got it when they was by themselves. They got a, re a revelation that if I can get oil in my lamp, when the bridegroom comes, I, I won't have to go back to looking for oil. I won't go back trying to get another, trying to fill up my oil. But they understood the five that was wise. They understood that if I just get oil right now, when the bridegroom comes, I don't have to hide. I don't have to act like I don't have it. So they got oil before he can. And what I want you to know today, that don't be a fool. Don't become foolish and walk around with no oil in your lamp. Don't become like those five when the bridegroom came, they wasn't ready. But you've got to get the oil. And the way you get the oil is you become a David and you get you get the oil all by yourself when nobody's watching and you, you fight body by yourself. Because if God be for you, then who can be against you? We're going to pray that Jesus would anoint us and give us the oil. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for this great word. We heard God. I pray, okay. God, that all the ones that are watching, that you would help us to become anointed, that you would help us to fill our lamp with oil so we can live here and go change the world, so we can go defeat Goliath, so we can go and become wise, and so we can go and reach all those that are around us. God, I pray that this word of God will help as many people, God, as you want it to be. God, I pray that your will will be done and that you would help us today to be anointed and to have oil in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless amen. you in Jesus' amen. name. Amen. See you.